Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Sunday. It's Poppy here. And today is time for yet another, as always, story time Sunday. I hope you're having a great day so far and you had a good weekend. And before we go back into Monday, I'd just like to leave you with one more little story time from my travels. So if you're new here, I do this every Sunday. And if you're not new here, let me know in the comments which of these has been your favorite so far. So without further ado, today's story time is about the 2020 quarantine in Romania and why surprisingly I liked it a lot. So if you've seen my other videos, you know that I had to leave Asia early because of COVID and because countries were closing down their borders, they were enacting really strict regulations, and I just felt safer and more secure being in a country where I could legally reside in, being either USA or Romania, and I chose Romania. So I spent the 2020 spring slash summer quarantine in Romania, and here is how it went. So the first thing I want to show you is this paper. Now, this paper was pretty much the epitome of the whole quarantine, and it was our declaration. So starting at the end of March, right when I came back to Romania, I literally caught one of the last non-canceled flights to my city. Mom said I'm lucky I made it because everything is annulled. Oh really, yeah. even from my... And then after that, I would say beginning to mid of June, it was kind of like fair game and things were almost back to normal. But I want to tell you about what the experience was like living here during the quarantine. Every time you stepped outside of the house, you didn't have to wear a mask at that point yet. Remember, it was March, April, May 2020. So no masks, but you had to have this declaration. Hey guys, so it's my first day that I can officially go outside of the house. My quarantine is officially over. I started feeling a little sick though today, so I hope it's nothing. But um, I just wanna show you the paper we have to fill out uh, that states where you're going. So you have to put your name, your date of birth, where you live, and which of the following uh, are the reasons for why you're going out. So. I put that I'm going to the closest grocery store in my area to make vital necessary purchases. That's that's the option for that one. Um, yeah, so uh, let's go out for the first time in two weeks and see if my legs still work. No? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, okay, pa. Uh, Glad you're out. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I would forget how to walk, but. It's just like riding a bike, you never forget. Let's go to the nearest supermarket. Come on. <laughs> we don't have masks, but it's okay. They ate wrong. Feels good to walk. Feels good to use those legs. We stopped by at the automatic coffee machine. Um, what coffee did you get? I got a uh, Pesca Delicato Lungo. I got a um, an Irish coffee, so uh, I don't know if that's alcoholic or not, but let's try it and see. 14 days later, guys. 14 days, I'm back in society, kind of. So I wanted to make this video to show you guys actually what it is like in Romania right now, like what the situation is um, in terms of who can go outdoors, who can't, when can you, when can't you, for what specific reasons or intents or purposes. And yeah, in my opinion, it's kind of serious uh, compared to the number of cases we have. So based on the fact that we only, okay, not only, but we have like maybe eight 8,000 cases of coronavirus with like 400 deaths, but 
uh, having that in mind, we have so, so many regulations uh, going on right now. Um, they're about to like have drones in my city. Like I don't really know where they're getting the budget for that, but they made an announcement that they're gonna have, <laughs> that they're gonna have drones um, patrolling the areas to see like who's who's going outside and who's going outside when they're not supposed to be where they're not supposed to be. Yeah, you can't be outside after dark as well. Like that's kind of obvious. I've been fine so far, you know. Um, so I guess you just have to like have this with you and obey the rules and not go where you're not supposed to when you're not supposed to. So yeah, that's, that's what, that's how it is right now in Romania. Uh, yeah, we're just like mostly staying inside. I mean, unless you go, like I've been going on walks or runs around just around the neighborhood or like going to the, you can only go to the closest shop, by the way. Like that's like, you can't go like, oh, you want to buy like this specific type of chocolate from like that shop two kilometers away you can't like you have to go to your closest neighborhood shop and take a walk in your neighborhood so yeah so yeah that's everything that is going on in romania um and that's the new the newest update is that we're gonna have drones patrolling uh the citizens so i don't know, that's really some type of like sci-fi shit at this point um we'll see i don't know where they're gonna get the drone budget but uh now, what this declaration contains is basically information about you and about the reasons for what you're doing outside. Basically, why are you outside of your house right now? And then you had to pick from this list over here. There are these 10 options, your reasons for leaving the house. So the first one is uh, for professional motives, professional interests, such as going from your place of residence to the place where professional work-related activities are occurring and back. So if you were still working, you would go to work and back. That's reason number one. Number two is for buying things that are necessary for people or animals like pets. So you could go shopping for only necessary goods. So number three is about medical assistance. So you can go to provide medical assistance that you need to do in person. And I would say maybe that has something to do with doctors or nurses that need to give some sort of special care to their patient. Number four, taking care of a minor, assisting and helping the elderly, the sick, or people with disabilities, or someone who has had a death in the family. Number five, individual physical activity, as in you had to be alone. Excluding activity done in a group or as part of a team, including activities done for the needs of your pet, so walking your dog. Close by to your place of residence, that's the last part of that line. So you needed to be in the area. They didn't specify, you know, the neighborhood, one kilometer, three kilometers, but they said, un apropiera lo cuince, which means near your place of residence so that's important you can't be like in the center of town and i didn't i didn't go in the center of town for two months because we don't live quite in the center of town we live uh like up on a little hill it's about a 20 minute walk into the main heart of the city it's like up this little hill and it's really nice here it's really quiet it's uh, more of a house residential area but yeah i didn't go into the center for two months because you couldn't and then they have this little line it separates reasons seven through ten and i'm not sure why but let's read them anyway so number seven is for donating blood at blood donation centers. They specify that you ain't going anywhere else to donate blood but the centers. So number eight was to help out humanitarian causes to volunteer. Number nine is about selling your goods, your products, your farm products, let's say. And number 10 is getting goods that are necessary for professional activity. This one, it sounds a little bit more vague. So I figured out why there's the line uh, after number six. It's because people that are 65 years of age and older can only do numbers one through six. So they cannot donate blood. They cannot uh, volunteer. They cannot um, sell things in the farmer's markets and they cannot buy goods for their professional work-related activities. So people 65 and older could only go outside between between the hours of 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. So only two hours per day and only four motives one through six. So that was really strict um, for elderly people. But those are the 10 reasons. Like I said, I usually checked off number five for physical activity or 
Number two, which was about going to the grocery store. Now, talking about physical activity, what was so interesting to me is that during the quarantine, it seemed like there were so many people outside, right, in the neighborhood. And because we don't live in the center of town, so the more you go up this hill here, the more it starts to become really a residential area with a lot of apartment buildings and blockwood, as we call them. So these huge and many multitude of big apartment buildings. So in those areas, there were so many people walking on the street, like, I cannot describe it to you. The sidewalks were flooded. And I don't know if it's because I've never been up in that area because I had no reason to go. If I want to go outside, I would either go in the Central Park or one of the two forests or just have a walk in the center of town or by the lake. But I would never go up there. But now, actually, when I have been up there now, because I discovered this really nice park in that direction, I realized that there are not as many people on the streets anymore. Like you'll barely see anyone. So it was really one of those things that was like people in the quarantine were getting antsy, you know? I mean, if you live in an apartment, luckily we have a garden. Of course, if you live in an apartment building, you wanna move, you wanna like not sit in there cramped up, cooped up all day. So that was so interesting to me. There were so many, many people walking around and I really liked to see that. I mean, we, we didn't have to wear our masks at that point. So you could see people's faces and people were talking to one another, but they were keeping uh, distance if they weren't together. And uh, yeah, it was really great to see it was spring and everyone was like getting fresh air and sun sunshine. So, so that was cool. You know, shopping was kind of replaced with the great outdoors, but now the shops are open again and people are definitely like the malls now it's november 2000 no it's december 2020 the malls are packed so talking about number two about going shopping the way it worked is that there were these guards at the entrance of most most shops that were standing there with a temperature gun to take your temperature from your wrist and there was hand sanitizer which they would make you use and make sure that you had the mask on when you were going in the shops other than that, shopping was pretty much normal. Of course, they put all the things on the ground, you know, to keep your distance, 1.5 or 2 meters. And yeah, other than that, shopping was normal. Of course, you had to stay in your neighborhood, though. That was the thing. You couldn't be like, oh, I live on this side of town, but there's a shop on that side of town that I want to go to. No, you couldn't do that. And the thing is, if you didn't have this paper with you, and the police stopped you, they stopped to check because they could and they did, you would get a 5,000 lei fine. Now this is massive. This is about $1,300 or a little over 1,000 euro. It's massive, especially compared to the salaries people make over here. It is like, the government actually made so much money off of fining people. I remember watching the news and people were getting fined because they were like bringing their goldfish out and they said they they checked the box that said like they're taking their pet out for a walk. I was just like, now that's, now that's what I call a loophole. Like that is fantastic. But of course you get fined. And, you know, you're not supposed to go to anyone's house. Clearly, this doesn't say anything about visiting friends. This doesn't say anything about going to your neighbor's house, about going for lunch, stopping by. No, you could not go to anyone's house. And that's the reason why I think a lot of people did get fined is because they were going to other people's houses or had people coming into their house. And you weren't allowed to do that. Guys, I can't even explain to you how much I'm sweating right now. So basically, my mom and I were invited to her friend's house. And um, she went already with the taxi. But I ain't spending money on a taxi. So I said I'm going to take public transportation. And um, the bus stop that I have to get to, I have to walk quite far. Maybe like 15 minutes, which is, I mean, far in terms of quarantine times. Because it's not in my neighborhood. And, you know, you can't, you can't just be wandering around. Um, well, you can't go to people's house in the first place, but let's uh, forget about that for a little bit. I'm so nervous right now. Oh my God, I'm almost at the bus stop, but then I'm thinking like, what if they, the controls, the police control comes to me while I'm on the bus? I'm like, what if they come when I get off the bus? Like, guys, I really, 
I know like I always do these random things and like wild things or like things that people wouldn't normally do like hitchhiking but I am a little bit nervous right now when it comes to like breaking the law or um getting getting punished getting fined uh probably because uh, it's a lot of money on the line okay um so yeah we're gonna see what happens but hopefully the whole journey should be a-okay but i will keep you updated nobody, nobody is here literally fucking hell i hope i don't get in trouble oh my god who wants to sponsor i'll do it if if i get fined Okay, so if I get fined, I'm gonna start a GoFundMe. <laughs> I'm like, lit. I'm not playing. Like, if I get fined because it's 5,000 lei, which, like I said, well, I don't think I said, so it's 5,000 lei, so it's about $1,300, I would say. Uh, about a thousand euro so um if i get fined just uh, be ready you're gonna see my gofundme and you can donate whatever you'd like <laughs> guys oh my god the police literally the police you can see them there they just see like right there right there right there, right there. they just they just drove really slowly by me oh my god oh, my heart was stopping i was just trying to play it cool you know i'm just just a just a just a young adult on their on their cell phone you know nothing nothing to see here nothing to question about I'm, i ain't going anywhere i'm just just standing at a rest, random bus stop for no reason uh yeah hopefully the bus comes soon look how vacant these streets are i'm just i'm just crossing in the middle like nobody's business this street is usually packed with cars packed you there's not even one car there's music playing usually you can't even hear this music that's how loud the traffic noise and the people talking is so when may 15th rolled around the quarantine was practically over at least the first part of it the first stage you know like the most the most intense period of the quarantine it was over and regulations were loosening up so what happened on may 15th was that salons were open again this was the big thing because <laughs> you know us women you know we've been waiting for this moment so like nail salons hair salons waxing whatever everything was open so everything was like completely booked people were trying to look their best again you know to feel good and you were allowed to go around walk around wherever you wanted you didn't need to have this paper with you after may 15th there was another paper that you needed to have if you were going more than 30 kilometers outside of your place of residence and you needed to have a specific reason for that as well you couldn't be like oh you know i'm going to like a rager like there's this huge party you, no that wasn't allowed you had to have also specific reasons and i will show you the picture of that paper that i have i don't have the paper itself but i have the picture and for example, I think it was about the end of May, either May 29th or 30th. And my friends and I were going to help out one of our friends in his like some house land that his family had. And we were helping him like do gardening stuff and whatnot. Now, this wasn't technically allowed, but in a way it was because you could put on that paper that you were helping out. You were like working for someone. You were helping them in their home. So it worked out for us. So like I said, salons were open, you didn't need to have this paper anymore, and you can walk wherever you wanted. So at that point, that's when I really started going for jogs around the neighborhood. My mom and I were taking walks around the neighborhood. Restaurants weren't open yet, but you can still like go to the park. Some food trucks were open, you could enjoy those. And people were just feeling really good that finally it looked like there would be an end in sight, you know? It was really hopeful. It was spring, felt like it was finally here, and things were back to normal. Now, at the beginning of June is when the regulations really got lax. So at the beginning of June, restaurants and bars outdoors were open. Now you can imagine these were packed, like you needed to make a reservation. Even my mom and I went to some restaurants at the end of June. So in one, we barely found a table. And in another, we had to wait about 20 minutes for a table. And in another, we went to a bar we got lucky because like there were two people and they were like using only half of their bench something like that so in june it was really hard because not only do people love to go out 
here in Cluj and there are a lot of people and they have money to spend because it's a wealthier city compared to the rest of Romania. Not only besides that, but <laughs> the fact that people hadn't gone out in months and they were like ready to go. A lot of restaurants actually weren't even taking reservations because they couldn't. It was just like first come, first serve, to be honest. Look at how my mom eats her tacos. Wait, wait, you have to see this. So she eats them from the top down. I've never seen anyone do that. I'm pretty sure that's like a serial killer trait. Why do you eat them like that, mom? Um, what do you have to say for yourself? I don't care. <laughs> By the beginning of June, it felt like everything really was normal again. Of course, you had to wear your mask uh, indoors, but that was it. You could go where you wanted, when you wanted, no curfew, not even for the elderly people. Restaurants were open only outside. Now, in these past three months, the sad thing was noticing a lot of stores and businesses close or go out of business. And uh, there are several I remember that, you know, like this one bakery that I would always go to down the street. This one coffee shop that was my mom's favorite that was down the street. Like they both closed, you know, they couldn't keep up anymore because they hadn't been open for two or more months or they were just inside now they didn't do delivery and okay they couldn't survive the pandemic so that was actually really sad to see so i'm gonna talk to you about what i liked about this quarantine and i know this is a really privileged thing to say because i'm lucky enough that i was with my family number one number two i still had a job because i teach online and so i know i'm lucky that this quarantine for me i had the privilege of you know like this bottom tier of maslow's hierarchy of needs like i had food shelter security so i could focus on my higher level needs like my goals my dreams my aspirations right um i would focus on learning new languages I so we got this one is your big brother in your dad and mom's house i'm gonna go with Oh, Jama. They didn't put Shama. I'm gonna have to check out why. So I figured out why it's Ma because Ma makes a yes or no question, and that was a yes or no question. Whereas, like, Shama was used when it's a non yes or no question. I don't know if that's always the case, but. You know, I was doing yoga. I had time to paint, I had time to make videos, edit videos, I had time to really set a good sleeping schedule for myself and eat well and fast and do all these things that I wouldn't have been able to do if it weren't for the quarantine because what I loved about it was just all this pressure of having to go here and go to this event and meet up with these people and do this and that like in my travels always to go and experience that pressure was off so I had the chance to really go on this kind of like mental physical journey within myself instead of outside always having to like oh you know it's saturday night i have to go to uh this um i have to hang out with my friends and do this or oh there's a trivia night oh there's a new art exhibit like yeah, of course i miss these things but it was nice to be able to not have them as well and have the time to really focus on me and what i really wanted and what i really liked and who i really wanted to be in my life and who i didn't and and actually, I got closer to a lot of people in my life in this quarantine because you can't go anywhere. You can't see anyone. And so you start talking to people online. You start Skyping, you know, having a lot of like Skype chats with many of my friends that I hadn't talked to in months, maybe years. I was able to talk to them again. And it was really, really nice. I really enjoyed that because I felt like now I was spending my time with people who I who really meant a lot to me, you know? I didn't have to like, oh, go out uh, to this couch surfing event and meet strangers in a bar. I didn't like have to make small talk with people in my hostel. No, I was like catching up with really good friends of mine and that was amazing. It really was just that because I always put a lot of pressure in my on myself, you see when I'm traveling to, to do this, to go here, to see this, to see, to see, to experience and now 
I didn't have anything to experience except the things that I would create for myself or do for myself. Although we had these really strict regulations in play, those regulations are what allowed me to build and redefine and reassess my own character, my values, my interests, my likes, my dislikes. I felt like I didn't even know what I dislike. I, I didn't even know what I don't want because I was doing everything and anything. And now the quarantine helped me like get back to that like, wait, why haven't I done yoga in two months? I love doing yoga. Or like, oh, why was I spending so much time hanging out with these people? I don't want to. And I'm really happy with how I spent my quarantine. I know I was beating myself up at one point. I was like, I'm doing too much this quarantine. Like I got, I got to just calm down and watch Netflix. So for me, I'm only going to move forward with taking the best from what happened these past few months. But realizing that other people were not as lucky as I am to have had that experience and in moving forward, realizing that, you know, what is my reality is not necessarily someone else's reality. But for me, this was my quarantine in Romania experience, what happened and what I got out of it. So thank you for watching this video, guys. If you want to subscribe, I would love that. You're going to see a lot more random videos. So hit the subscribe button down below and I will see you in